Hi everyone. Uh, okay, today I thought I would talk a little bit about um, a way to help us heal our gut. And that is using intermittent fasting. Now, uh, there are a lot of different ways of doing a fast and uh, a lot of different um, reasons why you may do different types of fasting. So for um, histamine intolerance, generally uh, the majority of people have a gut issue, whether it is um, SIBO or um, LIBO, which is lower intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or gut dysbiosis, or leaky gut. And leaky gut is a big one. Uh, I talked about that a bit last week. And with leaky gut, one of the things we need to do is uh, lower inflammation. And one way we can lower inflammation in the gut is to actually stop the onslaught of food particles coming down in through the gastrointestinal tract. Because every time food goes down in there, it actually kicks off an inflammatory cascade. And this inflammation is normal and natural but for us because we're already dealing with a lot of inflammation it's actually going to cause us more problems and then as we notice a lot of foods get through that leaky gut and cause us reactions so what we do is we use forms of fasting that don't involve having the food hitting the gut for a period of time now one of the other things we want to uh, kick off is something called the migrating motor complex. And a lot of people have very poor uh, use of this migrating motor complex in their gut. The migrating motor complex, I'll call it MMI, is part of our autonomic nervous system. So we can't control it. It's something that happens when we're in the rest and digest mode and can only happen if we are fully rested. If we have stress, then that whole part of our body shuts down. All the digestive stuff shuts down. It also kicks off best when the gut is empty for a minimum of 90 minutes. So this is why we need to make sure we have nice big gaps between our meals. Because if we're eating and snacking and eating and snacking and eating and snacking, our gut never gets a chance to actually kick off this migrating motor complex. When the migrating motor complex kicks off, it sloughs off the top mucus layer and all the bad bacteria and inflammatory particles and something called lipopolysaccharides that the bacteria produce. And all of those things get moved down the digestive tract and then out of the body. So as you can see, we really want to encourage this migrating motor complex because it helps re remove a lot of the things that are in our gut that can be causing us problems. You don't notice anything happen immediately when you do this, but over time that improves the health of our gut. So what, how do we implement this? So that one's really easy. We leave at least three preferably about four hours between meals. The other thing about the migrating motor complex is it does kick off at night while we sleep a little bit, but not a lot because once we're f like fully in that sleep mode, a lot of other things are going on and it's a little quieter. So one of the other good things to do is to fast for a longer period of the day. So we're not just fasting for eight hours while we're sleeping. Now this is often called something like the the 12-12 or the 14-10 or the 16-8 um, fast where we fast for 12 to 14 to 16 hours overnight and we eat within a short window. So we eat within uh, say an 8 or 10 hour window. The ideal is an 8 to 10 hour window and that means we've got more time for that migrating motor complex to kick off um, in the rest of the day when we're not eating. Now, um, the other type of intermittent fasting is uh, a full day fast. And we can do that by having dinner the night before 
not eating anything the following day and having dinner the following night at the same time. That's the easiest way. Uh, the other way that can be a little bit more difficult is having breakfast in the morning, not eating all day until breakfast the following day and doing it that way. Then the other type of fast is of course a three day fast, a longer fast. Now, one of the other things we want to kick in is something called autophagy. And autophagy is when the cells that are old and pretty much half dead and not uh, contributing to our body's health get killed off naturally. They get, they get removed by the body and recycled. The proteins in them get recycled and reused. Now, that can kick off in a, in a shorter fast, like a 24 hour fast. But a three-day fast really gets that working. So that's another reason why you might do a longer fast. Now, to really help the gut, we need to not be putting too much in there. So preferably we're doing a water fast during these periods of time. Now, for some people, that's not suitable. Um, if you have really bad blood sugar issues, if you have, you know, POTS or other um, really severe illnesses that might not be ready you might not be ready for that right now so usually things like just shortening the eating window and having less snacks is a way to improve the gut and to work on the gut other things you can do are juice foot fast and bone broth fast however those are introducing food into the gut so you're not going to get as much healing and also you can get very spiky blood sugar if you're doing juice fasts as well so I would prefer just to do a water fast now don't do fasting if you are underweight pregnant lactating or very 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 ill um, and if you want to do anything more than a couple of days of fasting make sure you're under supervision and if you're at all concerned or you're not sure of course you need to talk to your health professional don't go and just do it and um, you know you can feel quite ill if you're not used to it one of the best ways to start with fasting is just start with that shorter eating window and the bigger gaps between meals and work that in and get used to it and then slowly you might say well I'm not going to have breakfast today I'll have lunch and dinner and then you might go right today I'm going to try having no breakfast no lunch just dinner and see how you go and if you get really hungry and you need to break it at three o'clock so be it it's not a big deal you're just getting your body used to it slowly you don't want to have any major issues where you end up with dizziness or fainting or anything like that take it easy take it slow as with anything with histamine intolerance and mast cell issues we're very reactive people and we need to be slow calm and careful with changes to our body so that's my info on intermittent fasting uh, if you'd like to know more please leave a comment uh, if you'd like to know more about histamine intolerance and histamine uh, low and high histamine foods I have the low histamine foods guide that has a list of all of the foods so that you can follow an elimination diet and of course there's the meal plan with four weeks of uh, meal plan like laid out for you all the recipes shopping lists prep guides for every week it's all there um, so you can just pick it up and go with it and do a four-week elimination diet and coming soon plant-based low histamine recipe book it will be vegan so egg free dairy free wheat free so that's coming very soon see you guys